Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. All right, here we go. And we are live. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. And this is Seller Roundtable number 46. And we're super excited to have Helen Kinson on. And she is the, uh, I guess we could, should we say you're the print on demand ninja or is, is, is ninja the, a negative connotation? <laughs> um, you call me anything. I, right. uh, I have the, I'm from the Merch Money Facebook group. So Awesome. Thank you so much for being on. And I'm super excited to, uh, to learn uh, more about print on demand. I know I dabbled in it. You know, I have the, probably like a lot of sellers who have the uh, print on demand account that I've, you know, gone in and got my, I think it was like the eight initial designs that I threw up there and I was like, oh, they didn't sell. All right. I'm not wasting my time. And I moved on to the next thing. So um, the, I guess you're going to, you're going to give us uh, your, your wisdom and I'm going to pass it over to Amy and she's going to grill you. Great. Yay! <laughs> thank you What's guys up, so much. Helen? Thank you for having me on today, guys. This is really uh, fun to be with all of you guys. Yes, it's awesome to have you, and we're excited about having you on the show. Um, I learned about print on demand. Oh my goodness! I I think like probably like Andy did, right? We heard about it. We heard it was a way to make money online, and none of us really mastered it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so whenever I meet the, the people like you, Helen, who have mastered it, and also teach others how to master it. I'm always really, really intrigued uh, because there's just, you know, just like in private label or in any other type of e-commerce business, there are techniques to use. So I would love to just get into that today and, and help people understand, first of all, what the heck is print on demand? How can I make money with print on demand? And then how, it, how does that business work when it comes to scaling? So it's great to have you, Helen. Please tell us a little bit about you and your background, you know, maybe where you grew up and um, and what brings you to our show today as the <laughs> merch money expert. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thanks for that great intro. Um, I, well, I started, I guess it was 2014. I found out about selling on Amazon. I didn't even know you could sell on Amazon. So I found out about FBA and um, I started doing that in 2014. So I did all retail arbitrage and online arbitrage. Um, and I did that for quite a few years, I guess. Well, merch came out in 2015. So I heard about it right when it came out, Chris Green and, you know, several other people started talking about it. So I applied for an account. I got an account within the first month. Um, and then I just didn't really know what to do with it. I wasn't a graphic designer. I didn't know um, really much what I could do with it. And it was fourth quarter. So I was really busy with FBA. So I didn't do anything. I had the account, just left it sitting there. Um, I didn't actually do anything with it for an entire year. So I uploaded my very first shirt right before they started shutting down accounts that hadn't uploaded anything. So <laughs> if I had waited like one more month, um, it could have got shut down for inactivity. So just, just barely got in there. So I started, I uploaded my first shirt in 2016. Um, can you guys hear background noise? I'm so sorry. Just a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna... We can still hear you loud and clear. <laughs> All right. I might have to uh, text my stepson. He decided to uh, go uh, on a speakerphone with someone right now. Anyway. Um, so I, I uploaded my first shirt and then um, I, I just, to me, it was just so exciting to be able to upload something and potentially have that shirt sell forever. So I did, I kind of had similar experience to both of you where it didn't really take off right away. Cause I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, but to me, it didn't really, I didn't have high expectations for it. So I was kind of okay with growing slowly. Um, so I actually just got on a subscription plan from Brianna Green, Brianna Muller Green, um, she had started like a print on demand subscription service. So I would get 25 designs a month and I would just upload those. So my primary focus was FBA all the way until February, 2018. Um, 
And I would just do 25 designs a month that I got from Brianna. So I wasn't even designing my own designs. It was purely just on the side, no thought into it. Um, but because I was uploading those designs, you know, they were selling and merch has this tier level system where you get, uh, once you have a certain amount of sales, then you're able to upload more shirts. So by doing that, like slow and steady uploading 25 a month, um, I was able to get to the 2000 tier, which means you could upload up to 2000 shirts. And at that point I started taking it more seriously. Cause I was like, you know what, this could really start to become a, a real income. Um, so I started learning a lot more about it, started learning how to design myself. Um, and I decided to start Merge Money because I kind of wanted to document the process. I had kind of seen all the different people with FBA, people like Steve Reagan and um, some other people I've been following. And they, they had all started, they weren't necessarily experts when they started. So I was like, you know what? I just kind of want to document this process. So I started Merge Money before I was really an expert. I was, I, I would say like intermediate. Um, and I asked a few other people kind of like this, where I wanted a few other people to do the show with me. So I tried to pick people that had more experience than me. Um, so I asked a few people to do the show with me. They said yes. Um, and then the rest is history. We've done a show every week, at least one. Now we're up to two shows per week. And through that process, I was just able to learn so much because not only did I learn from the other people that were doing Merge Money with me, but I also learned from all of our guests. We had a different guest each week. Um, so through that process, I've learned all kinds I, of things I to help with design. That. I've learned marketing, all kinds of things. Yeah, we have done something very similar with our podcast. You know, Andy has scaled his Amazon business to, you know, so many SKUs and he's got, you know, way more experience in scaling than I do. And I kind of started my group amazing at home just by documenting the process of inventing a product and bringing it to market. And, uh, and so it's kind of been this like learning journey. Uh, but I want to take a step back. I think it's so interesting to hear that you, like me, didn't really do anything with merch in the beginning and like Andy as well. Uh, but I want to take a step back and let's start back at the beginning of, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what's merch, what's yeah. print on demand. So can we start there? What is print on demand and merch? Yes. So merch is just the Amazon version of print on demand, but print on demand uh, basically just means you print the product when someone orders it. So there's not big stockpiles of a product. Um, so, you know, if you want to test out a design, like you think maybe this unicorn design will sell really well, you don't have to buy hundreds of them or thousands of them. You can just upload a PNG file. It's just a computer file. Um, there's no actual shirt until someone buys it. And once someone buys it, then either Amazon or whichever company you're going through will print the shirt and ship it to the customer. So it's nice because there's no storage fees. There's no, um, you, you don't have to worry about actual physical products. It's all digital until someone buys it. Got it. So I know right now, Amazon merch has lots of different types of merchandise that you can put um, a design on. They have pop sockets for yes. the phone. They have, um, you know, shirts and sweatshirts and I think the only thing they don't have, which totally bummed me out was tank tops <laughs> because I like wearing those to work out and that's one of my niches. So I would have loved to kind of take that to the next level um, with merch, but that, uh, you know, was kind of a limitation. But um, what are the different types of merchandise and platforms that are most popular for selling print on demand products? Yeah, and actually they do have tank tops now. So you'd be happy to know that. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back to my merch account. <laughs> I know they have tank tops. They have V-necks. Um, they're on more platforms too. So now they're in um, the UK and in Germany. Um, and I'm expecting them to go a lot more places as well. But so far, no official. We haven't been told yet if that's happening. Um, but we're hopefully going to be having more products and more platforms as time goes on. So far since 2015, you know, every few months they add something different, a new product or a new platform or something new. 
um, merch, merch is actually a lot less products than a lot of other platforms. So like Zazzle and Redbubble, and there's a lot of Teespring, a lot of different companies that have similar thing where you upload a design and if the product sells, that company will ship it. And a lot of them have a much wider range of products. You can get mugs and beach towels and leggings and even like backpacks and so many, pro literally hundreds of different products can be print on demand. Um, but merch is, I mean, merch is only one part of Amazon's total business. So that's part of it. And the other part is that, um, Amazon just goes at such a scale that in order to be able to fulfill all the products, they need to have a very uh, good supplier of the products and they need to have enough printers to be able to keep up with it. Cause it's pretty crazy how many shirts Amazon really sells through merch. And so um, just so I to be clear for our audience, um, when you sign it, you can sign up for a merch account. It's free. You can go, I think it's merch.amazon.com, right? Yep. Uh, and you sign up for a merch account and um, it might take a little while to get approved, but um, it's, you know, you can go anytime and sign up free. And then you will have to upload a design in a certain dimension. There's lots yeah. of videos online. I'm sure that Helen has some great information for you for merch money. But the idea as Helen explained is that you upload a design in a certain dimension. Uh, it's usually like a rectangle. Um, and that design then goes on to a shirt. Um, yes. And you can preview the design on your shirt and you can choose the different colors and then you can publish it. And when you publish it, it actually, you actually write the listing at the time. And when you publish it, it then appears on amazon.com. And anyone can go then and search for it on amazon.com um, or you can share it on social media channels, things like that. And you can get people excited about your design. So if you're in a certain niche, you also set the price of that product. So Amazon will tell you based on the shirt that you pick, the material that you pick, um, what the big and how big your design is. If you do the front of the shirt, the back of the shirt, how large that design is. Uh, Amazon will tell you what the cost is to print that shirt and you know have their print on demand service. Then you set the price. So let's say that Amazon says, I, I, let's say I pick a black t-shirt and I put a little you know small design on the front and Amazon says, okay, the cost of this shirt is um, $11. And then I go and I uh, set the price inside of the merch platform. I set mm -hmm. the price as $14, $14.99 or something. And yep. I publish it and it'll go through a little copyright review. They want to make sure that you're, you know, not taking anyone else's designs. Right. And, uh, and then it'll, you'll get an email and it'll say, Hey, your shirt is now published on Amazon. And let's say that you sell that design and then you make, $3 per shirt that you sell, but you didn't have to send any inventory in. You just put a shirt up there. Um, and it's a way to, if you have, as Helen mentioned, 2000 shirts, right. well, that could be quite a significant income, especially if you're growing, um, your audience off of Amazon and you have a, a loyal following and you're creating designs in a niche that people really, really love, such as fitness or um, something funny, comedy or pets. Um, so did I leave anything out about getting started with merch? No, you handled it really well. Um, one thing to just say is that when you upload to merch, you don't have to just upload to merch. So they, they don't have like an exclusive ownership of the design you're still the owner of the design so you can upload it to other places you could upload it to zazzle teespring redbubble there's there's over 40 different places you could upload it plus you could upload it to your own website you could upload it to seller central um, on amazon etsy um, so it's unlimited where you can put the design it's also unlimited what products you can put it on um, and there's no risk because there's no actual listing fee. There's no upfront cost at all. So it's completely free. Um, and there's very little time um, 
like I remember with FBA, I'd have to ship it to Amazon. So there'd be some sort of delay of the shipping there and then them processing it. Um, there's, there's only a couple of hours delay for them to just make sure that it doesn't violate any trademarks or copyrights. And then it's listed live. And that's really good if um, something is trending, like that crazy broom thing where everybody's putting their brooms like standing up. I mean, I don't know if someone's going to want a t-shirt with that, <laughs> but it's, you haven't seen that? No, I have. I don't know what's going on with that. I've been, oh, I've okay. Been well, things that, like, like that happen all the time where there's this random thing that goes trending for a little while. It probably is not going to last very long. So it's not something that like a retail store could go buy all this stuff and then list it. Like, But with us, we can put a design up real quick and just see if anybody thinks it's funny and buys it. Um, that one's probably not a great example. I don't know how many people want to buy a broom on a shirt, but there's things like that where it's just like this flash of like viral moment and now, you can when just you upload a shirt to Zazzle, for example, um, is that only is, is that I'm only familiar with like Printful and a few other ones, uh -huh. but um, is that also a platform where people go and search for shirts where kind of like amazon.com where there's, you know, people search for shirts and things there. Do these other print on demand type companies that you were be uploading your designs to, do they also have a large audience where people are searching for things? Or is that something where maybe you would post that on different social medias or, or things like that to get it sold? Um, all of these platforms have somewhat of an audience and they also, most of them do some sort of advertising. So they help push your listings through, I don't know, Google or all different places. Um, it's not the same as Amazon, like Amazon by far has the most organic traffic. So all of these smaller ones, you'll occasionally get organic traffic, but it's better if you can do some marketing or put it on your Facebook page or Pinterest account or something like that. Hey, Helen, really quick. We, we, you, you said the magic word, which is marketing. So if yeah. you don't mind, Amy, um, it's, I, I'm really curious because, you know, w when I got on to, to merch, I was like, okay, I got it out there, but like, how do I promote this thing? Right. To me, that seems like one of the hardest things with merch. Now I know that, um, if you have like, uh, an Amazon advertising account, um, uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, that used to be called, um, what was it? Um, Amazon, I can't remember the acronym, but it used AMS. to be only for AMS. Yeah, it used to be only, thank you, only for vendors. Um, and But that's one of the, the places where you could actually uh, advertise a, a merch uh, item. And I tried that and it was unsuccessful. So I'm just curious if you have any, uh, any secret tips that you want to share with us without giving us all your best stuff, um, uh, how you're promoting uh, your merch products. Really, I if you guys are already doing private label or already doing marketing, really it's all the same principles for print on demand. It's just if you want to go that far. Like I know for private label launches, it's a big deal. Like you give things away free or I don't know. There's a lot more steps to it to make sure it goes well. You don't have to do all of that every single time you do a t-shirt, but you absolutely could if you want to. But the research part beforehand will help you decide if this is going to be a good shirt or not, just like with private label, like, is this going to sell well or not? Sometimes you might feel like it should sell well based on your research and then it doesn't. And then that's uh, a problem when you've bought a whole bunch with print on demand. It's not as much of a problem if it flops because you literally spent five minutes making it. So it's not a big deal. Um, but you should do the research to, and be able to tell if this will be a good product or not. Um, so things like, you know, it's getting close to St. Patrick's Day. So you know there's gonna be people buying St. Patrick's Day shirts. So just doing some research and finding out like where there's a gap in the market. Like there's St. Patrick's Day parades and events in all these major cities. There might be people that want a St. Patrick's Day for a particular city and there might not be any available right now on merch. So doing that kind of research and figuring out where are the gaps in the market and then putting something there will make it more likely that you get sales. And then if you market it, it's even more likely than that you'll get sales because you're doing some of the marketing. Um, and then it's just up to you if you also want to potentially have like an influencer try to help you sell it. Something like t-shirts 
is wonderful for like having TikTok help you market or Instagram. You can get some of these people that have large audiences wear your shirt. Um, and then that could help you get sales that way. Perfect. And one more follow-up because you kind of let, let into another thing that I was thinking about um, in terms of, I was going to ask you, you know, how, how you research for, you know, getting the ideas for these products. So you kind of answered that a little bit, but the other thing I'm interested in is do you, you know, you said in the beginning you had like, uh, I forget the, the name of the service, uh, but I know that you, you know, a lot of people in like Upwork and Fiverr will do this too, where you just like throw up a ton of different designs, like just constantly throw up new designs. Um, is that more what, do you still do that? Or are you more concentrated on uh, quality over quantity? Um, a volume could work, um, but it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's better if you can do the research and put something that you know has an audience um, and that you know you have buyers for, because then it's not so much of a shot in the dark where you're just guessing. We call it throwing spaghetti at the wall where you're just kind of like, well, maybe it'll sell. And you just kind of like throw it up there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It, it might sell, you might make a few dollars, but if you spend a little bit of time researching and making sure there's actually a buyer out there for that product, um, it just means that you're, it's more likely you're gonna make more money from it because there's actual real people that want this and are buying it. Um, some people develop like Facebook pages and audiences and they literally can just like we had yesterday, Rachel Miller on the show and she was explaining how um, when she did merch, all she would do is just ask her Facebook page what they wanted on a shirt and then she would make it, put it on the shirt. <laughs> so it's like you, if you know what your audience wants, that's the best because then you know for sure. Um, but the next best is taking an, an educated guess like, okay, there's going to be 200,000 people at this parade in this city. There's no shirt about it on merch. Pretty likely somebody in that group is going to want this shirt. Let's put it up there. I think so, there's an so, opportunity in Amazon memes. <laughs> yes. that's, a, that's a trend lately. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Memes are great for getting ideas or, for sure. Or, or, or maybe one, or maybe one that says impeach Trump and then another one that says don't impeach Trump, right? Yes, <laughs> and like, that's the other thing. Um, <laughs> you, you can do different brand names on merch. You don't have to have all of them be under one brand name. So a ton of people do that where they do pro-Trump, against Trump, um, if you had the same store, it'd be a little, you know, people might not like it if you have the opposing view, but on merch, you can just put a different brand name and nobody knows. Right. Awesome. So I have another question about that. Um, you mentioned, uh, I think it's, it's a really good opportunity for people that still have a day job because, um, when I was working for the Air Force, I was part of our booster club and I could very easily make us a shirt for various events or, but the problem that I had was the minute, and this was probably a year and a half ago or so, and um, I cr created a shirt, and I'm actually wearing one of them right now <laughs> on merch, and put it out there for our squadron. And all of a sudden, the next day, someone else had taken that design and the name of our squadron and put a bunch of shirts out there. Mm -hmm. And it just made our squadron look terrible because it wasn't our emblem and and in the, with the military that can be kind of like it was really like degrading and kind of messed up so it looks like what someone is doing or what the what is happening in merch now is people are just looking for new designs that get put up and there must be sign of something that scrapes new designs and mm -hmm. then they're just like taking that so what they did is they took our name and then just created like generic shirts that were not our font or our letters or anything like that and all of a sudden I go the next day and you know I look on um I look for my squadron on Amazon and sure enough there's like five or six shirts and they're terrible um yeah so you know what kind of things like that have I think it's a great opportunity if you have like a hometown basketball team or maybe your kid's school um you could be creating shirts for that and then the, what i love about merch is you can do any color any size youth women men and so if you have local connections you can create shirts uh, the other thing is you don't have to publish it on amazon you can just create a private link for people to give to people so then maybe you can prevent what happened to us with our squadron design being um you know copied but uh but what do you recommend for that? 
Well, first, I'm sure you guys know, like if you've ever been on like a seller on Amazon for any amount of time, you're going to hear stor- horror stories, no matter which platform, no matter which person, no matter what, like <laughs> there's going to be horror stories. The horror stories around merch like are laughable because it's like you have no money you spent. So it's like, how horrible can it really be? Right. Um, so there's not, to me, it's like of all the platforms, of all the things that could go wrong. Like when I would do FBA, you know, I'd go to stores, buy something, it'd be great. There'd be no sellers. By the time it gets shipped to Amazon, someone else is jumping on that listing. All of a sudden it's not as good of a buy as I thought it was gonna be. Same with private label where it's like all of a sudden there's very few and then all of a sudden everybody has the same idea and like there's a lot of private label people trying to sell the same kind of thing so it's 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 definitely possible where people will copy your designs there's forms you can fill out to argue that um and and get those designs taken down but it's uh usually if you're the first one up and if you have a sale it's hard for the copycats to really surpass you because why would their design put up after yours do better than yours like usually the original one does better in in amazon's algorithm and especially if you have a sale so it's it's uh it's something that's not perfect like it definitely is something that is frustrating if that happens to you but at the same time it's like um I mean, the opportunity is just there. You have the opportunity to put something free in front of Amazon's audience and potentially make a royalty off of that forever. So, I mean, there's designs that I put up in 2016 that I still get royalties, you know, every week from that shirt. Um, So it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, wow, you get to have an opportunity to have a listing in front of all of Amazon's buyers forever. And it never gets to get, have to get restocked. You never have to, replenish it. It's just there. So what are the, some of the biggest roadblocks for uh, print on demand sellers to be able to become profitable? I think there's some of the roadblocks that you guys have run into. So copycats, the first time you get a shirt copycatted, sometimes people just leave the platform, never come back. So that's one. Another one is if you don't have a sale in the beginning, or if it takes a little while to sort of learn the platform, learn how to design, learn things, you know, some people just stop at that point. Um, And then the other thing is sometimes it feels frustrating going through because you have to get tiered up in between each, like Amazon has this thing where you can only upload 10 shirts in the beginning, and then you have to sell 10 shirts and then you get tiered up to 25 where you can list 25 shirts. And then you have to sell 25 to go up to the next level. So because of these levels, sometimes people get frustrated and just stop at some point. Um, I would just recommend that everyone just, I I think it's good for everyone to have a merch account um, and just take it slow. Like just don't, that's what I did. Like the first two years was literally just 25 designs a month. It was just like on a clock, just every month do it. It didn't take anything out of my time. It didn't take anything. Um, I didn't worry about if it was working or if it wasn't working. This is the kind of thing where it's like, you have to have real long-term thinking or you have to just be like, um, sometimes people get lucky and that, I don't want to say the word lucky, but sometimes people hit a trend early and they do really well, really fast. But if that doesn't happen to you, sometimes it can take a while, but if you stick it out at some point, you're making enough money where literally every month you're making enough money and you don't have to do anything else. It's like, right. there comes a point where the amount of money you make surpasses the amount your bills are. And from that point on, it's like passive income. Right. I love that. Yeah. You know, what I love about merch is as a private label seller, somebody with a business, I can very easily, you know, make a shirt and have it by the weekend. If I'm going to a local event here in San Antonio, you know, and Mm -hmm. I have my business out there, I can make shirts for my whole family and we can look very professional. And I didn't have to hire a company. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to upload my logo to um, Amazon merch, put it out there and purchase it, you know? So I love that I can do that. And I love, I can do it for my kids too. So you know, Mm -hmm. my kids have something coming up or there's like a little event or something like that. It's, and that's a really great way for people to make their first 10 sales. You know, maybe they're a member of a club or something like that, or even, you know, 
parents at the school can kind of come together and say, hey, you know, I'm willing to make the shirts. I'll sell them at cost, basically. Um, you guys can pick the colors and the, and the uh, design and all of that and the sizing. And it becomes very, because people are familiar with Amazon. So they're like, wait, oh, I could just buy it on Amazon. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I love that. It's a great opportunity. I agree. Everyone should have a merch account. It's, it's pretty easy. There's no like big design. Um, you can do it right in Canva. Uh, there's lots of easy ways to create basic designs. Uh, so you don't have to be a design artist. Yeah. Um, but I agree. I think there's a lot of great opportunity. And it can fill in around whatever else you're doing. So if you have your own website and your own private label products, oftentimes a um, some kind of print on demand product can fit in there. Like, let's say you have something for dogs and you have like dog supplements or some kind of product that's a, a leash or whatever it is you can, there's print on demand dog bowls. There's print on demand, like dog, uh, um, what do you call it? Like little scarf things, uh, Bandanas, all kinds of yeah. print on demand products for pets. So you can mix those in with whatever other products you have. Um, so it's just like an inexpensive way to sort of expand your website, expand your product offering, test things out because it's, it's a free way basically to test things out. And if it works really well, then you can order larger quantities from your supplier. Thanks for tuning in to part one of this episode. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, SellerSEO.com and AmazingAtHome.com.